From the Clark Ford Studio in Oxford, Mississippi, MBW Digital proudly presents the Oxford Exxon Podcast. I'd say thanks for tuning in, but why am I going to give you a round of applause for something you're supposed to do, to be frank? And now, here are your hosts, Chase Parm. And broadcast school has really paid off. And Neil McCrady. I deserve to be on TV. Welcome to this Wednesday edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast. Chase Parm, Neil McCready. I am in the Clark Ford studio back in Oxford. Neil in Hoover, Alabama still as SEC Media Days are ongoing. Ole Miss is done. Ole Miss's day yesterday. Tons of content at rebelgrove.com to come check out. See that, everything from uh, everything that Matt Luke said, transcripts, videos during the uh, the different press gatherings, all the way to uh, players' reactions and more there on the site. We do have a website. You should subscribe. You should read. Again, rebelgrove.com. We'll get into a lot of old Miss today. Today is Circus Day in Hoover, Alabama today. But we're mostly going to focus on Tuesday on the Oxford Exxon podcast. It's brought to you every single day by the Oxford Exxon. Highway 6 West in Oxford. Lunch specials, ribs, daiquiris, clean convenience store, good gas prices. And they get even better with the mobile rewards app, the Speed Pass Plus app and more there with your uh, local Exxon station. So take advantage of that. And again, coming to you from the Clark Ford studio. We are Clark Ford is in Amory, Mississippi. That phone number is 662-257-1900. Call that number. Mm -hmm. Ask for Corey Clark. Tell him what Ford you're looking for. And uh, he'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. Straight to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. That's how they prefer to do it. It's efficient for them. It ends up being very efficient for you. You can, because you can let it be a baseline for you moving forward. That's certainly your prerogative. Or you can make it the cleanest, most efficient, most uh, satisfaction. What's the word I'm looking for? Kind of satisfactory. Uh, where you really get satisfied with your purchase. It's uh, You get a great product, uh, great service after the sale. I always say this, Corey wants to be your truck guy. He wants to be your car guy. And you can find out what that, that means by giving him a call. 662-257-1900. So, um, again, I mentioned all the content at rebelgrove.com. Um, again, check that out. Yesterday, you got a uh, a Bourbon South podcast, the second one that we've done. John T. Edge was our guest. You can find it again in the uh, Oxford Exxon feed for the week. <clears throat> he uh, was very, very good. John's an interesting guy. knows uh, Southern food and culture about as well as any human on the planet. So we talked a lot about what... What got him into his life's work, some of his projects, his TV show that's on SEC Network and ESPN with True South, and uh, just kind of talked. We also tried some different alcohols. We tried a gin, a rum, a couple bourbons, uh, had, had a little, kind of ran the gamut of, uh, of, of, of alcohol there this week with, uh, with John T. So you can, again, find that on the, uh, on the site and everywhere else that you find this, uh, this here podcast on the MPW Digital Network. So, um, all right. Ole Miss yesterday, we'll jump right into it, Neil. Uh, I thought normalcy was the word of the day. I thought everything for Ole Miss went normal. I thought that they were just a program at Media Day this week, and considering the last few years, it's a pretty good thing to be. I thought that uh, there was nothing controversial. There was nothing odd. Frankly, there weren't a lot of headlines either, but that's all right. Uh, I think it was a step in the process for Ole Miss yesterday, and it went about as well as it could have. I agree with that completely. Um, totally different feel to it this time. There was no – the only NCAA question that Matt Luke got that I saw was someone who covers Missouri asking because Missouri, if they lose their appeal, won't be bowl eligible this year. And it was asking Matt about how you handle that because obviously Matt's gone through that a couple of times. That was it. No NCAA stuff. I did not hear a Hugh Freeze question. Um, no scandal. None of that. Frankly, uh, there weren't a whole lot of media in the room. It was a, a quick session. When the players got there, they, they had a media lunch from 11 to 1 yesterday. The players got there a little after 11. And frankly, most of the media had gone down to have lunch. There just wasn't a ton of interest in... Ole Miss, and, and uh, I guess that's good and bad. It's it's bad in that, you know, there was Georgia went right before Ole Miss, and there was a ton of interest in Georgia. Um, but that's what happens when you win, and you got to get back to 
that place, but it was good in that there weren't tons of, of negative stuff and tons of negative. It's like you said, it's a step in the process. Uh, and now it's kind of turn your attention to the part of, of the job that I think Matt Luke likes the most. And that's coaching football and, and they'll get rolling in a couple of weeks. And, and, um, we'll talk about it in a little bit. The one thing I did kind of sense, and I talked to, I talked mostly to Matt Corral for a story that, that I did. I, I listened to, uh, Alex Givens, and then I read uh, Momo Sonogo's comments. They're uh, they got a, the players have a kind of a chip on their shoulder that, that comes from a couple of things. It comes from not winning a year ago. It comes from some of the negative things that have been said about them, and I think it comes from just a. It's not disrespect. It's just overlooked. No one's dissing them. Just no one's paying any attention to them. And uh, that's, at least they're claiming, that's motivation. So we shall see. We, we, we knew this going in. Ole Miss would get some, uh, some points from media members and in general for bringing Matt Corral. How did you feel like he did yesterday? Oh, I, I thought he did great because, again, two things. One, there's no shortage of personality there. That's number one. Um, and then number two, he, he's been on the radar since his, what, freshman year in high school? This wasn't his first time to interact with media. That's kudos to Ole Miss again. I said it on Twitter. I think I said it here. I don't remember. Kudos to Ole Miss for doing that. that that's who needed to come. It is, after all, media days. If the media didn't show up, I mean, this is one of those events that truly is for the media. And that's who the media wanted, and they brought him. And I thought he did well. He's got a, a brashness about him, um, not in a bad way. Just he's got a confidence about him. Um, he's He's got he's kind of a matter-of-factness to him. There's There's not a... There doesn't appear to be a hell of a lot of filter, which, uh, frankly, I, I kind of find refreshing. It's kind of fun. He's he's not he's not uh, some super polished PR guy. Uh, like I listened to Jake Fromm just before him. Georgia again went. They kind of took their turn through the circuit right before Ole Miss did, and you know Fromm's almost polished to the point of being a politician. You know, he talks about his fishing and all that stuff. And I'm not saying he's not genuine, but it's a lot more practiced, if you will. I thought Corral just kind of answered questions. thought he was very frank about, about things. And uh, uh, there was a story that, that damn Antonio Morales put out on the, on the athletic uh, earlier in the day that was pretty thorough. It was one of those deals where you read it and you say, well, I'm, I'm not topping that today. Um, it, it, if you have a subscription to the athletic, it's it's worth reading. Where he, you know, he talks about uh, getting counseling a little bit early, back earlier in, in high school to kind of work through some things, and and uh, it wasn't his deal because he just just he, he kind of is who he is, and and if that offense sort of adopts his and Rich Rodriguez's personality. I don't know how good they'll be because a lot of there are some questions up front. We'll get to that in a little bit, but they're certainly going to have a different edge to them than they've had in the past. I thought his answer yesterday about the differences between Rich Rodriguez and Phil Longo, I thought those were, were kind of fascinating. It was very clear on who's his kind of guy, if you will. Yeah, the, for those who haven't read it, and you should. It's, again, it's rebelgrove.com. It's part of the <laughs> Rivals Network. It's uh, it's less than the a price of a, of a lunch, significantly less than the price of a lunch at most places uh, for a month. And, and uh, we write stories and everything, and, and we have a message board and the whole deal. Um, anyway, he was asked about, you know, the question was, does, does Rodriguez do anything to make it easier on you guys referring to a young quarterback room? That's, what, that's where 
the question for context purposes. And his answer was no. No, he's every detail. If you miss a detail, he gets pissed off, basically, is what he said. And he goes, I kind of like that. So Rodriguez is out there and he's real fiery and you have to be on your toes and you have to be ready. And if you miss an assignment, you're going to hear about it. He, and then he said, you know, Longo was different. Longo was, was quieter. Didn't, didn't really get upset. Yeah. I mean, didn't get worked read, up. Read, read the story, but I've got the quote here. He says, Phil was more quiet. Phil was definitely more quiet. Not a lot of stuff bothered Phil, but Rich Rod, every little thing bothers him. Like, shoot, you just have to watch practice and you'll see. Of course, the younger guys look to me, the guy who just got here. We're all in this thing together. We're a unit. We're only strong as our weakest link. Little cliche there. But, yeah. All right. Yeah. He, he likes his cliches. Most people do. Um, I thought that was interesting. You know, I mean, one of the things he said in Antonio's story was, you know, I'll only get one chance at this. And he's talking about how Matt Luke gets one chance at this. And. In many ways, Chase, Rich Rodriguez gets one chance at this. Yeah, I mean, Rich Rodriguez has a, a, a great resume, no doubt, no doubt. But you can fall out of this profession quickly. Ask Houston Nutt. You can fade fast. Les Miles had to wait a while for all the jokes about eating grass and all that stuff. Les Miles won pretty big at Oklahoma State. Les Miles won a national title at LSU. He did. He, they, they, they raised the thing and everything. He, he won. He had to wait a while. And had he not taken Kansas, which is kind of the great outpost of Power Five, he's out of it. So Rich Rodriguez, the last two years, he, he got embattled at Arizona with a, a, a personal thing. And then he was out of football for a year. And the fact that he's the offensive coordinator at Ole Miss is indicative of a couple of things. One, that there weren't exactly a, a, a host of schools banging on his door to say, hey, come be our head coach. And two, that he was at a point in his career where now you got to take a gamble. So there's a lot of, there's a lot, you know, there's, there's a lot to prove for, for Corral, for Luke, for Rodriguez, and they're sort of, sort of all in that together on that offensive side of the ball. I think you're going to – whether it works or not, I don't know. We'll see. This, the score of the Memphis game when they start will be 0-0. Zero to zero. Um, Whether it works or not, we'll find out. But there, there certainly is an edge to them that – that edge was not there a year ago. Jordan Tamu was not an edgy person. I, and I love Jordan. Great person. But Jordan was not a fiery, edgy guy. Um, and, and Longo certainly was not that he was, was, if you took away the buzz cut that kind of gave him the look of an edgy guy, if you took away the buzz cut, Longo was more of a professor. <laughs> it's a different deal. I mean, this is, this is a different edge to these cats. That's a good point. Longo changed his whole demeanor publicly a little bit with a haircut. If he had, like, flowing locks, it would actually fit his deal a little better, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, if he if he had yeah. your hair. Yeah. People would say, oh, yeah, he's real studious. Yeah. Real uh, real. That's kind of what I always thought. I kind of thought, ah, football nerd, football scientist. Not in a bad way, just very, very well, technical. But because he's got the... But because he's got the buzz cut and stuff, and he's got a lot of Texas roots, you think of him as kind of a cowboy, kind of a rough guy. Yeah. That's not him at all. Very soft-spoken. Analytical. I'm not criticizing. Just kind of, you know, likes kind of a nerd. Rodriguez is not that dude. Rodriguez is super nice to those little dogs that he that he loves. <laughs> and other than that... <laughs> And and, and 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 his daughter. I mean, you know, I mean, he's a nice person. Don't get me wrong, but on the football field, there's nice is not the first thing that comes to mind when well, you watch. Well, and coach. when you've been a head coach for as long as he has, so comfortable in his own skin and the way he does things, and that's a huge deal. It, 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 there's yeah. he he can be himself and not wonder whatever. No, he knows he's coached Michigan. He's coached Arizona. He, he he's gone to you know BCS bowl games or whatever at it, 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 West Virginia. I mean, it's it's a deal where. 
he can just be himself, and that, that's a very fiery, that's a very direct guy who has seen results from that system. So, I mean, that's what Ole Miss is also getting. They're not getting somebody who's got to feel things out. There's not much feeling out with Rich Rod. He's just going to do what he does. Absolutely. And, you know, if it works, everybody benefits. And, and if it doesn't work, well, that, cross that bridge if we get there. That I suspect that bridge is, if, 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 you, if it doesn't work, that bridge is probably not going to be particularly sturdy. It's the funny thing because Ole Miss they went five and seven last year, went six and six. The the the, the media draw of all the NCAA stuff is over. They're just a program back to eighty five scholarships, all that stuff. But from a standpoint of personalities melding, they're not there might not be a more interesting story. It's just got to play out first. There's not much you can do about it in the preseason. You got to kind of see it, see if it works, see if it doesn't work, and then you know once it sinks or swims, we'll have a little better idea. But I mean that that's the fascinating part for me is that. Matt, he's done everything he can do to try to be successful from the standpoint of hiring coaches to handing over things that need to be handed over and to to give himself the best chance to be a successful head coach at Ole Miss. And there's, there's a certain noble thing about that. There's a very practical thing about that. And if it works, that's why it's going to work. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really intrigued, if nothing else. Uh, it's going to be... It's going to be something certainly to follow. We're going to we're going to talk about players. Uh, well, you know what's interesting? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Here, just to finish that thought, what's interesting to me, and, 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 and this came up yesterday a couple of times, just talking to people, everyone makes the Matt Luke comparison to David Cutcliffe because they spent a lot of time together. And, you know, Matt likes Cutcliffe a lot, and Cutcliffe is a mentor, and Cutcliffe is a guy that he turns to for advice and all of that. So I get it. I'm not criticizing the people that do it. He's not following the David Cutcliffe model. He's following the Philip Fulmer model. Be the face of a program. Be give it personality. Give it your your kind of lunch pail mentality that, that that's who Matt is. And then go hire good coordinators and let him coach. Hire people to put together a, a recruiting plan and then let them do it. Hire good people, delegate, and 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 be the be the coach, be the head coach, but don't dip your toes into everything. David Cutcliffe, even when he was a head coach, he, he called plays. When he was a head coach, he was off, also an offensive coordinator. David Cutcliffe loves the chalkboard. It's not Matt. That's not what Matt's doing. Everyone does this. He's a protege of Cutcliffe, and he is, but he isn't. I think that's interesting. He, he's following he's following a completely different model than the one that David Cutcliffe ran at Ole Miss and runs at Duke. Totally different. Yeah, they have similar personalities, and everybody reflects everything else on them because of that. That's what it is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're right. They're, they 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 come across very similarly. But yeah, no, I mean it's 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 nowhere near yeah. the same thing. He's very comfortable yeah, hanging over it, keys for a day. He's delegated. He's gone out. I think he deserves. I think he deserves a ton of credit for it. He went out and he hired a defensive coordinator that he wanted. I mean, I think we can say it now. Uh, Golding at Alabama was who Ross Bjork wanted. Mm -hmm. Ross Bjork tried to go get Pete Golding. I don't ever. I, I, my personal opinion, and you feel free to disagree. And this isn't a, a rip on Golding or McIntyre or anyone. This is. I'm trying to just be a, a reporter here. I don't think Matt Luke really wanted Pete Golding. Matt, I'm sure Matt thinks Pete Golding is a really good football coach, but Matt wanted Mike McIntyre. And then there was a point where I think Matt was was ready to hire Will Hall, and he just decided I'm I'm and, and Will there would have been a super comfort level. They're really good friends. Will is considered an up and comer, but I think he, I think I think he decided you know what I, I'm going to take a step back. I'm, I'm going to look at this further. I maybe I need to hire somebody with more experience. Again, we'll find out whether it was the right call or the wrong call. The score of the Memphis game will be zero to zero when they kick off. But he absolutely kind of followed his own gut and got his guys. And now he's letting he hired them. 
to do a job and he's letting them do the job and he is saying, what do you need? And he's trying to get it. And he, he went out and hired Tyler Siski and said, over overhaul the recruiting thing, set it up the way it needs to be set up. Let me know what you need. And that's what they've done. And he's delegated. And now we're to the point where you start to find out whether it works or not. Yeah. Take a quick break here and tell you about Community Mortgage. We told you for a couple of weeks now that uh, interest rates are as low as they've been in about the last two years. Maybe it's time to refinance. Maybe it's time to purchase. Just get a look at what Jason can do for you if you're one of them in their four one of their four areas: Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, or Chattanooga. You can find him at six six two two three four two seven zero four or J L O W E at communitymtg.com. The uh, podcast is also brought to you um, by our friends at Dead Soxy. Again, go to deadsoxy.com, enter the promo code Rebel Grove at checkout. You get 30% off all orders, including the sale items, including the no shows, which would feel uh, really good right about now. Deadsoxy.com, promo code Rebel Grove, get 30% off all orders. You don't want to miss one minute of the action at the vault this season. Ole Miss football arrives this September. Uh, September the 7th, I think, is the opener against Arkansas, the home opener. Reserve your season tickets with the new 2019 season ticket pricing for just $299. For more information, visit OleMissTicks.com. Podcast also brought to you by Pinnacle Trust. Pinnacle Trust based in Madison, Mississippi. Uh, they, they provide detailed, specialized investment management, financial planning, retirement planning for individuals and businesses, and much more. They also have the Pinnacle Trust 401k advisory services. If your company is not particularly happy with the 401k plan that you have set up. It's not performing the way that you want it to perform. It's a headache. Get in touch with the people at Pinnacle Trust. Their uh, Pinnacle Trust Retirement Plan Advisory Team, uh, they specialize in a lot of different plans, 401k plans, 403b plans, whatever you might need. That initial consultation is free. It's pintrust.com, P-I-N-N trust.com. Podcast also brought to you by the Weston Jackson home to Soul Spa, the ultimate luxury spa experience in downtown Jackson, and also a Stell Wine Bar and Bistro, where you can get a creative craft cocktail, enjoy the curated wine list, and enjoy Chef Caden's uh, many f- fantastic offerings there at Estelle Stell Wine Bar and Bistro. Podcast also brought to you by John Edwards, Regency Tra- Travel Incorporated in Memphis. A lot of you have used John. It's, uh, you've gone to him. He's part of Virtuoso. And you've gone to him and said, hey, here's kind of what I'm thinking about doing. I've got some ideas. I've got a budget. Here's my budget. Now, what can you do? And so far, John's turned around a lot of trips, a 30th anniversary trip to Italy, Venice, Lake Como, Florence, Rome, uh, a fall trip to Greenbrier, uh, a trip to Alaska for fishing and hiking, uh, uh, bear viewing, all that stuff. He's done a lot of different things. In other words, he really knows the travel business inside and out. Get in touch with him, 901-494-3387, or send him an email, jedwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients will save $50 off the first book trip just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. And we're brought to you by Grenada Nissan. If you're in the market for a Nissan vehicle, that's the place to go. Grenada Nissan is in uh, Grenada, Mississippi. It's just off Interstate 55. I've done business with them for more than a decade. They're fantastic. You'll love them, too. It's Grenada Nissan USA.com. So um, we talked about Matt Crow. We talked a good, about, good bit about Matt Luke. The other thing with Matt is you can read his transcript pretty quickly. You mentioned not a ton of questions. But the other thing with that is for the first time, and, 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 and Matt didn't do it last year either, but, I mean, you know, Freeze had a couple of different opportunities where he probably needed to do it. There was no filibustering. There was just kind of answer the question and move on. So you're not getting these 22-minute opening statements that Les Miles or Ed Orgeron or not just naming LSU coaches, but people have done in the past. It was it was it was very just kind of on the face yesterday, if you were if you will, for Ole Miss. Um, you and I. Well, both, and the other yeah, thing. Go ahead. The other thing that people don't don't if you subscribe to RebelGrove.com, you sort of figured this out probably. We met with Matt, the local media, at about eight fifteen up on the third floor at the Winfrey, the Hyatt Regency, Winfrey, whatever you want to call it. And we had, I don't know, 12, 13 minutes with him where we pretty much asked what needed to be asked. A lot of the questions that got asked, I'm trying not to rip anybody because it's not rippable. Some of the questions that got asked yesterday by local people 
I think, I think it's because they wanted that. They wanted to be on TV. It, it really had already been covered. I mean, it, it was, it was, it was a thorough 13 minutes. He answered everything, and like he said, when we we, we walked out of there, he said, I was, "Someone said, see you in a little bit." And he goes, "Yeah, I'm gonna say the same thing I just said." <laughs> I mean, there's only there's, there's only so much you can say, and you know, and you, you you do the cycles as a coach, and you talk to the radio people, and you talk to some of the TV people, and it's it's the same questions. You answer them pretty much the same ways. He. He's he goes in with the give him credit. He goes in with the media plan and executes it. And that's never going to be never is a strong word. I don't like that word. That's unlikely to be ever his strong suit. Where people go, man, that Matt, Matt Luke, God, he's fantastic as an interview. I think he's gotten much better, but you know that's not his comfort zone. I think his comfort zone is coaching football. He's gotten more comfortable got- with it. He's gotten more confident with it. He's He understands the process a little better. And I think because – I think it's twofold. He has experience. Um, he's he, He's been doing this a little bit now. And two, because of all the noise around the program gone, he can just talk about football. He's not having to sit here and wonder, hey, what's the next question going to be? If i got to deal with this crap or this stuff or whatever – I just sense an overall additional comfort level for him. Yesterday in front of the mic, he looked and sounded better than he had at any other point. Just yeah. on being there and being a part of kind of the fraternity, if you will. It was only his, what, second time? Yeah. You know, last year was the first time, and there was all the NCAA stuff, and it was a uh, – and I, I think the other thing, and maybe we'll see this in the fall, maybe we won't. I'll be repetitive. The Memphis game will be zero to zero when they start and scores will indicate a lot of where this goes. I don't think last year he was particularly comfortable with the decisions that he had made regarding his coordinators. It's a fairly educated statement that I'm making. Um, I think he knew this time a year ago that it was probably a mistake that it probably wasn't going to work that he wasn't particularly comfortable with it that he had made a an error now people will hear that and go well that's, that's why you can't and I get it and that's a perfectly valid argument you all, if you're going to have that conversation, you do have to turn around and have the part of the conversation where you say, he was going into that, after he, after he got the job on a permanent basis after the interim year, he didn't have a lot of time, didn't have a tremendous network of stuff. It's my opinion that he probably thought he was going to be a head coach, but at a different program. And he didn't really feel like it was something where you could say, Hey, these guys busted their butts for me all season. They stuck with me at a time when it would have been easy, easy, easy to go, Hey man, screw it. I got to get the hell out of here. I got to get my resume together. I can't, I can't, I, I got to get on the phone. I can't focus on these game plans. I can't do that. I've got to be, they could have phoned in that Kentucky game. They could have phoned in the Mississippi State game. Could have gotten just gotten out, gotten done, and they didn't. And so he just didn't feel like he could turn around and let those guys go. And so he stuck with them. And I think he kind of sensed by the time the season rolled around that it was going to be iffy. That's my opinion. He seems a lot more comfortable with what he is, um, what he's getting off the bus with this time. It's that, and it's also just the simple part of if you've got your plan that you believe in and you're going, hey, this is my best effort, my best way to make this work, there's a there's a, there's a a contentment in that. You know what I mean? That, hey, yeah. if it works, great. If it doesn't, this is, the, this is the way I wanted to do it. So there's not a regret thing. There's not whatever. There's not questions of, hey, had I just done this. He, he's hired who he wants. 
He's done exactly the plan from a recruiting standpoint. You know, do, do they have time to execute it? We'll see. I don't know. But from a recruiting standpoint, from everything he's done in the last eight to ten months or even farther, whatever, it's been what he wants to do and the way he thinks he can be successful. And there is a piece to that. That's part of it, too, is that, hey, this is how I wanted to run things. I'm running it, and I, I can go to bed at night and feel good about the process. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I don't think he could have said that last year. I think last year he, he went – I think sometimes the staring at the scoreboard thing was not, just not particularly comfortable with what was going on on the field and, and saying probably to himself – in his inner dialogue, you know, I knew I knew not to do this. And people go, well, then you should have changed it. Okay, yeah, but listen, guys, it, it, firing the coordinators in week five and turning the whole thing into absolute abject chaos is rarely the solution. The solution was, at the end of this season, I'm going to move on from these guys. I'm going to get the guys that I, I want. Gonna get this thing. I'm gonna do it. I'm like you said. I'm gonna do this thing my way, so that if it doesn't work, I'm gonna do it my way because a, I think it will work, and b, if it doesn't work, I'm going to be able to look myself in the mirror and say, you know what, I, I did it my way and it didn't work out. I wouldn't have changed a thing. And next, and I don't think he could say that last year, but five weeks into the season, firing Phil Longo and turning the off offense over to somebody wasn't going to change anything and anybody who thinks it was you really don't understand football or business or anything he had to just suffer through the rest of that season and in fairness seven weeks into the season last year they were th and everyone knew they it wasn't a good five and two but they were five and two yeah that is, for, that, 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 that is very forgettable. Yeah, well, there's just I, – I do it too. I mean, we work in the media. There's a ton of revisionist history that goes on. But sometimes you have to get some time away from something and go back and say, okay, why did it not work? And put some perspective on it. I think you can do that now. It wasn't. Do I think it's fair to criticize the decision to keep Longo and McGriff? Yeah, I think it's fair. Absolutely. Big boy football. Do I understand why he did it? Absolutely. And I think I probably would have done the same thing. And quite frankly, I think 99% of people out there would have done the exact same thing. If you repeated the process and put yourself in his shoes with the way that that thing unfolded, I think you probably would have done the same thing. And the people that say, I know I wouldn't have, then good for you. So other players that's in Corral, Momo Sonogo, and um, Alex Givens, any uh, any impressions there as we, 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 we kind of move on? Not really. I mean, you know, Sonogo talked about having a kind of a lot, you know, they, they're ready to, this is what you expect. The stuff you expect from a team, a defense that gave up 500 yards a game. They got lit up like a Christmas tree most of the season. That, that was frankly bad. We're a lot of the same kids are back, and people are saying, well, what makes you think it's going to be different? I mean, I don't know what you expect. Like, I don't, Not you, Chase, just in general. You, in general, expect a kid like that to say, well, it's, it's not going to be any different. It's going to be the same thing. I mean, we're going to get curb stomped. <laughs> of course, they're going to say the, the right things, and um, you know, it, it is a better scheme. One of the things Matt talked about, and I, I do think there's truth here. I, I, he didn't try to oversell it. He says, I, I think we're going to be better. I think we're going to be lined up better. We're going to be in position better. I think it's a smarter scheme. If you're in the right place and you're doing it the right way, the results should be better. But, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't, think anybody's it would be foolish at this point to come out and say you know what yeah you know, we were what 115th or whatever in the country last year we're gonna be top 15 this time in defense we're, we're, we're about to go set the world on fire i mean why would you over promise that it's 
it's a tenuous deal. I mean, they've got to go out and recruit defensive players. They're doing it. But those guys aren't there yet. You, you're going to have to ride with the ones that are there. And I, I know they're really counting on, like, Jalen Jones and Montrell Custis being healthy. Matt said everybody's healthy. They need Benito Jones to be healthy. They need Coatney to be healthy. They they need the newcomers, Lakia Henry and Sam Williams, specifically to be impact players. There's, there's a lot of variables going into that. Just like there is on the offensive side where when you talk to Alex Gibbons and you realize that for example, if Alex Gibbons goes down in week one, the whole damn thing is a carnival at that point up front. They, I don't want to steal his thunder. He's the one that, that looked into it. It's Brian Scott Rippey, who's been a guest on the show um, a number of times. He was kind of breaking down the number of snaps that the backup offensive – if you look at the media guy – the people that that are listed as second on a depth chart that really doesn't exist right now. There's no experience. And specifically yesterday, I asked Matt Luke, you know, hey, how many freshmen are you going to have to play? And he said, well, wide receiver, offensive line, we're going to have to have some help. And he mentioned Nick Broker by name. I mean, a true freshman is going to have to step in and at least provide quality depth. And sometimes with freshmen – uh, Laramie Tunsil, Greg Little, sometimes that works. Sometimes with freshmen, that doesn't work, or it certainly doesn't work right out of the gate, their freshman year. Well, and you get kind of that weird taste in your mouth when you go, hey, what are the examples? And you go, Laramie Tunsil and Greg Little. And you go, ugh. Yeah, I mean, Laramie Tunsil, Laramie Tunsil's the possibly – Brian Baldinger had a, a video out. It's been all over Twitter. Most people have probably seen it where he says Larry Tunsil is the best young offensive tackle in the game and, and by the end of the season might be the best offensive tackle in the game, the pro game. So, I mean, when you're, so if you're comparing anybody to Larry Tunsil, that's just unfair. And then Greg Little was a second-round draft choice and is being counted on to start as a rookie in the NFL. So comparing him to Greg Little is not particularly fair. Well, no, because, I mean, it wasn't fair that we come, you know, not us, but people compared Greg Little to Laramie Tunzel because he replaced him. You know, it's just, Yeah, it's one of the reasons people said Greg Little had a disappointing career. I'm like, no, he didn't. <laughs> no. Not at all. He had a really good career. He just, yeah. he wasn't He, he, he didn't have the career as maybe one of the top five players in program history. Okay, well, thanks. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And, and frankly, because it's an offensive tackle, no one, you just brought up a great point. If you were to really break down Impact, career impact, throw the NCAA stuff. Don't be a smart ass. On the field, I'm not an Ole Miss historian. I, I have no idea. Um, not it's not my, my cup of tea. I just don't I don't know. I've been on the beat. This will be my twelfth season. I'm having a hard time thinking of anyone who was more impactful X and O wise. Chad Kelly. Yeah, I mean, Chad Kelly's Dexter. 15 season was the number three SEC total offense season in, in, in league history. Um, I saw Perret Jerry have a very impactful one season. Yeah. I'm not saying he wasn't impactful before that, but I'm talking about my years on the beat. If, if Laramie's not I the answer, Laramie. it's simply because of the number of games he missed. Yeah, but I, I watched him just dominate at times. Just dominate. And maybe it's – because he missed some games and multiple seasons took Miles Garrett completely out of the game. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Just the only guy who got to him and I thought, okay, that was about a 50, 50 day was Carl Lawson. Yeah. That's it. Alabama's and Lawson's really good. Him. Yeah. He got Nick Saban and Kirby smart to say, ah, F it, and scrap the game plan sort of and go to something else. They just stood up and tried to knock balls down in the lanes. Okay. You know. So, no, you, it's a good point. And point being that Ole Miss has, they need freshmen to step up, and also, and this is nothing against Royce, Royce Newman or anybody else, they also just have a left tackle question for the first time in hell a decade. I mean, yeah, you were you were doing this. I mean, I don't want to steal your thunder. You were talking about 
Their hey, left tackles over the years have been very, very good. We're talking Little. We're talking Tunzel. I thought McCray was a really good tackle. You've got Sowell. You've got – maybe I don't remember if Massey played the left side or not, but they've had so many tackles over the years, even going back to Michael Orr, where very, very infrequently have they had to worry about the left tackle position. And it's at least something that is new and not this super recruit or this guy coming in where you go, hey, this guy's going to be the dude. It, it, it's, it's a question mark for the first time in a long time and the first time we've had to talk about this. So Yeah, because they're going into it right now with, what, Royce Newman at tackle? Yeah. Ro- Royce is unproven. And behind him, it's probably they'd have to move Gibbons and, and who am I forgetting, the, the other offensive linemen. It's, it's kind of... I mean, they're going to move Bryce Matthews around a little bit. Matthews was the one I was thinking yeah. about. They might have to move him out to tackle. They might have to move him into center. Eli Johnson is is unproven in large part because Eli's just had a hard time staying healthy. Yeah. But yeah. Eli hasn't played a lot of quality snaps. And you don't know, it, it, can he hold up? I, I, and I'm not saying he can't. But if he can't, you've got to move Matthews into center, at which point now you're counting on Newman and if Newman gets hurt, you've got to place somebody that's completely unproven there. It has no experience there. Because they'd really like to keep Alex Gibbons in one spot the whole year. I think they'd love to put him at right tackle and say, hold that fort down. Yeah. No. Anyway, we'll uh, be back in one second. First, tell you about Master Cuts Lawn and Landscape, premium lawn care throughout northern Mississippi, but they offer a lot more as well. They build custom playgrounds, retaining walls, pool decks, outdoor living spaces with paper patios, forestry mulching, and much more. You can find them online at gomastercuts.com or get a free quote with the phone number 662-607-7773. Again, that's gomastercuts.com. We're also brought to you by Harry Alexander. Harry's an Oxford-based re. Max Legacy Realty Agent, big part of Savannah Square, nine-acre development that's seven-tenths of a mile from the Oxford Downtown Square. It's located east of North Lamar, short stroll from the Midtown Shopping Center. You can check out the model home at 215 William Street. Then you can get in touch with Harry at uh, 662-801-5621 at savannasquareoxford.com. The Oxford Park Commission currently registering for youth flag football and the fall baseball season. Leagues are open for ages 6 to 12 in football and 6 to 15 in baseball. The cost to sign up for football is $50. It's just $40 for baseball. Each sport will be played at FNC Park. For more details, go to OxfordParkCommission.com. Podcast also brought to you by Oxford University Bank, OUB, locally owned and operated right here. Here in Oxford, when you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. It's home to Casasa, the absolute best cash checking account. They also have a commercial checking account now paying 1% interest on uh, on the on the account as long as you keep $10,000 in it. It comes, it comes with fully interactive online banking. To learn more, go to uh, liveoxford, bankoxford.com or call 662-234-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. Um, everyone loves their pets. No one loves stepping in their pet stuff. And certainly no one loves tracking that stuff back into the house. If you want to uh, eliminate that problem, get in touch with Scoopers Pet Waste Removal LLC. For $10 of cleaning, they'll clean up your yard. They'll do it on your schedule. Whether that's weekly, bi-weekly, or a one-time service, no contracts required. You can cancel at any time. If you have multiple dogs, it's $12 for each, I'm sorry, $2 for each additional dog. It's a scoopers.oxfordpetwaste at gmail.com or 662-506-2754. Uh, scoopers Pet Waste Removal, they're number one and your pet's number two business. And we're brought to you by 7 South Tailgating. 7 South uh, is the premier tailgating uh, service provider at Ole Miss. They offer your standard tailgating services such as tent, table, and chair set up, break down, but they also offer so much more. They'll set up, break down, store your own personal gear. You can rent from them. They have cooler service, TV, satellite service, um, storage bins for supplies, decor, chandeliers, basically everything you could possibly imagine with tailgating. They've got it. Call or go online today for a detailed quote customized to your specific needs. 662-321-1682 or visit 7southtailgating.com. Podcast also brought to you by G&M Pharmacy there on South Lamar and Oxford to deliver local 
to your home or workplace in the off Oxford area. They also offer MedSync, which means they fill your prescriptions the same day of the month, every single month, to make it easy on you. 662-236-2222 is the phone number, and while you're in there, if uh, something you're more you're interested in or want more information on, you can find out more about the Sildenafil. It is the cheaper alternative to uh, other brands. Rating as little as 15 minutes. You can break those pills into a half, into a quarter if needed. And you can even get uh, discretion if that is required as well. You can just go to TysonDrugs.com or G&MPharmacy.com. Click Product Request and request a prescription right there online. So uh, not Ole Miss, but uh, Mississippi-related, Mississippi State-related, did you see where uh, fandom became a big part of the jury selection and the Jackie Sherrill uh, case that finally is getting into court? No, I didn't see you that. You didn't see this? Reading no. From the, reading from the Clarion Ledger. It's an important question to ask in a diehard college football state like Mississippi, especially when it involves a former head coach, the NCAA, and a Madison County courtroom. It was asked by attorney Jim Wade Monday during jury selection in Canton on the first day of the long-awaited Jackie Sherrill trial. Cheryl, the longest-serving football coach in Mississippi State University history, is taking on the NCAA. Cheryl's attorneys say that when the NCAA publicly named Cheryl in violation of three recruitment violations, it effectively blacklisted him from future work as a football coach. As head coach of the Bulldogs, he was, he was accused of offering a car and a job to two separate recruits, both of which led to separate unethical conduct allegations. The NCAA's infraction committee would later dismiss all charges against Cheryl, although it would go on, to, go on to penalize the university. The allegations were unfounded, not true, attorney Rachel Wade told jurors in opening statements. Point being, I'm getting to, they were asked if they had any allegiance to Ole Miss or Mississippi State that would cloud their ability to conduct uh, the uh, the jury process as uh, as jurors. That was a, uh, a part, and they did find 20 jurors to this point for both sides is where they are uh, as of that writing that said they could uh, operate without bias in this case. Just now getting to court. <laughs> Just now. I'm, 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 I know, I know, I know. You know what I'm trying to avoid saying. I know. Jackie Sherrill's last game as head coach was 16 years was ago. It was Eli Manning's last game as, as Ole Miss's quarterback. Last regular season game, right? Correct, yes. 31 to nothing or whatever it was. Yeah. Eli's how old now? Uh, well, 37? He, he, yeah, he's he's been around the block a time or two. Played a few games in the NFL. A couple, couple of games. There have been 460 court filings since 2004 <laughs> in this case. 460. See, right now it's 2000. It's 2019, carry the one. Uh, yeah. During jury selection, a prospective juror wearing a maroon with white trim jacket and clutching an MSU baseball cap admitted he would not make a good juror. I'm just being honest. I don't think I can be impartial in this. Fair enough. <laughs> Hail State. Yeah, whatever. All right. Uh, uh, I will say, having been put on a jury that the next time I'm if there is a next time when someone when they say do you think you can be objective I'm going to stand up and say no I don't I don't I, I there's no chance and then I will come up with whatever I have to come up with to avoid a repeat of that situation so frankly if you had told me that I was going to be on that jury selection pool and I knew it was the Cheryl thing I would have gone in there either wearing state or Ole Miss stuff or both I would have figured out a way to go nope no chance this is a bit of a Sophie's Choice for some Ole Miss people, right? It's NCAA versus Cheryl. Yeah. I mean, Ole Miss people cheering for the judge. I, the, the, <laughs> what's fascinating to me is it's just what you said. It's, it's 2019. It's interesting, though. This case is kind of fascinating when you really look at what they're arguing. It says um, – one of the attorneys for Cheryl said he was a target, and that targeting ultimately ended his college football career. But Cal Mayo, who is representing the NCAA and investigators, Rich something, and Mark Jones, argued evidence proved Cheryl had already made a decision to retire through statements he made at a press conference. And because the football program had experienced a slide in recent years, Mayo said the timing of the press conference in which Cheryl said MSU was, quote, his last rodeo was critical since it came two months before the NCAA publicly released his name. In the press conference, Mayo said Cheryl also denied the NCAA investigation played a role in his decision. Quote, absolutely not, Mayo quoted Cheryl as saying. 
Well, look, the NCAA thing didn't help his career, but the product that he put on the field the last season, it's kind of like last Houston Nuts. seasons. They were they were good in two thousand, if I remember that correctly, and then yeah. they went three and eight in the two thousand one season, and beating Ole Miss actually beat Eli. Um, that was the famed Rose Bowl year everybody talks about, where Steve said they were going to the Rose Bowl. They went three and eight. They were bad in 02, and then they were awful in 03. And that was that, it. So you're telling me they did not get to, they did not get to the Rose Bowl in the Rose Bowl season? Um, I'm telling you that they fell more than a half dozen wins short. Yes, that's what I'm telling you. I mean, change a play here, and play there. Play here, play there. That's, that's... A series here and a series there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that that's why he got fights like Houston Nutt. I mean, Houston Nutt's career is not over because of just the NCAA thing. Career's over because his team sucked the last two years. The product that was put on the field was his product, and it was horrible. So I don't know. What's he suing for? Is he is he what 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 is he? What are they requesting in damages? I haven't seen that. Yeah, I'm looking at the 01 state, uh, state schedule. They, they lost to South Carolina um, in week two, 16 to 14. And that must have just really been what pushed them off course and kind of ended things because the next week they went to Florida yeah. and lost 52 to nothing. 52 to nothing. 52 to nothing. Uh, that game just, that score is not indicative of how close that game was. And really, that just knocked them completely off course where you can't judge on anything past that because then Auburn beat them 16 to 14 in, in, in Jordan Hare. And then uh, Troy State beat them twenty-one to nine the week after that. Um, Troy was really good that year, though, if you remember that. That that was a different. That was a Troy team that they they had an edge. They were they were they were nasty. Went to LSU. Well, sorry, they played LSU got? at home the week after Troy and got beat forty-two to nothing. Yeah, but that game was a lot closer than the score. I remember. Yeah. They did beat Kentucky 17-14 The next hell year. yeah, they did beat the crap out of them. That game was not as close as. the score indicated yeah that game was one where you watched that and you went you know what if this team if this team had just gotten off to a better start they, they were heading to Pasadena <sighs> so how long is this trial going to take uh, beats me I, I forgot about it I saw it on the headlines and went huh because oh, yeah. it's been two decades well, not 16, quite. 16 years from now, when you're listening to the Rebel Rags case, you'll go, really? I remember that. Yeah. 16 years. Carson will be almost 30. Are you expecting a similar trajectory? They haven't even started that position yet. I don't know. You hanging around for the Alabama show today? Uh, I'm going over to get a couple of podcast interviews and such, and then I'm going to hit the road and head back to. Uh, You've been gone a week. I've been gone. Yeah, we left Thursday afternoon, and uh, I'm and I get back today and leave tomorrow. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, let's see. What uh, are the Cubs at least riding a little bit of a streak or something? What are you running into this weekend? Uh, they they won on a walk off home run last night. Okay. They've won, I guess, four of their last five since the break. They're two and a half over Milwaukee, three over the Cardinals. Uh, I think we see John Lester on Friday. I haven't even. The Brewers I'm and just Braves not have split the last two. I have seen that. I'm just not as locked in as I used to be. Yeah, they haven't they haven't named starters. I, I know that Chicago is expecting record heat this weekend. You mentioned Carson. Are you less interested in Oklahoma City for a year or two during this transition? I'm more, more interested in what they do off the court with, oh, with right. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. development and stuff. Yeah, um, they officially did the Westbrook trade yesterday. 
Um, so they spent the day kind of honoring Russell as they should. I'm fascinated to see whether Chris Paul actually plays. Surely they trade Chris Paul. There's no reason for Chris Paul to play. So who's the point guard? Uh, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, the Kentucky kid oh. who was really good for the Clippers this this past season. Okay. Um, and he's a good player now. So so yeah, I mean if I mean I was hoping they were going to do the deal for you know and get Tyler Hero and and have a backcourt of uh, Shea. Oh, and and then would I be interested in that? I mean, I would. I'm, they're not going to be appointment television the way that they've been in the past. I'm still curious, but there are now some other teams that because I just like watching the NBA. I, I everybody thinks I'm like this diehard Thunder fan that's like waving my pom poms and stuff. I'm, it's really hadn't been that way in a while. I like them and I cheer for them and stuff, but but I really like the game. I'm I'm excited to watch the Pelicans. Um, I'm excited to watch Milwaukee take that next step because I think Giannis is is uh, if he takes the n- another step they're going to be really fun. Philly's re- ready to win a title. The Clippers will be fascinating. The Lakers will be fascinating. I think the league's going to be really fun to follow next season because there's no there's there's no superpower. There's there's a bunch of good teams, but like the Rockets, I'll watch a lot of the Rockets because I want to see how this works with with Westbrook and, and Arden and two guys that need the ball in their hands. Yeah. We will be back tomorrow with uh, a lot of interviews. We'll have kind of some interview stuff tomorrow. I'll uh, I'll speak to uh, Jeffrey as well, and then we'll uh, sort of have compilation on uh, Friday as well. So we'll have plenty to you. Yeah. Just for, hold, hold on a second. I forgot to do this earlier. Yeah. Um, uh, don't forget, if you and your friends have been telling yourself that you want to get some Blue Delta jeans, but you can't get to Oxford until football season, do remember that uh, the team at Blue Delta jeans, um, they have a solution for you. You give them a call or an email, uh, info at bluedeltajeans.com, and uh, they'll come to you no matter where you are. Organize a group of friends, family get, to get, get together, a corporate get together, uh, whatever the case may be. They'll come to your house, to your business. They'll throw a house pop-up party. We've been to some of these. They're really fun. They're really cool. Uh, you can be kind of the host with the most, if you will, and uh, let Blue Delta uh, come in, and, and you have one heck of a party. If you, uh, if you're an employer and you want to explore the corporate package, it's really cool. You can check out. Um, they'll come to your comp- corporate retreat. They'll measure everybody uh, for a truly unique gift. Uh, if you if you want to incorporate your co- company logo, you can. They'll custom print pocket linings with your company logo to ensure that uh, your gift is is never forgotten. So again, it's info at bluedeltajeans.com. Yeah, then we'll take advantage of that. We'll be back again tomorrow. Talk to you then.